much more this morning here on Daybreak. Well, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Friday, June 15th. I'm Daniel Shedd. Lauren has the morning off. That's right. I'm Joe Morano. And as you guys get set to move on this Friday, good to see a park reopen. Good to see a park reopen. Going to need to hydrate. That's been the theme, I think, I, right? Man, if you're behind the ball on this, I don't know where you've been. It has been hot outside. Right. Elisa Rapp has been telling us that all week. She's back with us with your forecast first. Guys, we hit 96 degrees yesterday. 96. Uh, of course, if I'm remembering right, that's the hottest day that we've had so far this year. It's just incredible the heat and that heat popped some storms on the overnight. It's 73 degrees in Springfield right now with a couple of clouds, a south and southeast wind at 10 miles per hour. Mostly clear skies out there this morning, much quieter. It's 73 in Springfield right now, very warm as uh, we start out our Friday. Um, We'll have dry conditions through the first half of the day. A couple of storms possible in the afternoon, just like yesterday. They'll be uh, widely scattered to isolated in the afternoon. And we'll uh, keep these temperatures pretty warm as you fire up the barbecue. 80 degrees by 10 o'clock. We've got a sizzling forecast for dad details in 10 minutes. We start off with news from around America this morning on Daybreak. Six people were taken to the hospital last night after a roller coaster derailed in Florida. Video captured firefighters rescuing 10 people who were trapped. Laura Podesta reports. They heard a loud boom when a roller coaster derailed in Daytona Beach last night. Two people were ejected and fell 34 feet to the ground. They were injured, but both survived. Fellow visitors at the Boardwalk Entertainment Park ran underneath the dangling cars to help those still trapped in their seats. They all ran yeah. in and were trying to hold her up in the cart to keep the cart from falling, and they were just screaming, don't move, don't move. A tourist said he grabbed heavy-duty straps, typically used to hold down cargo, from his truck to help keep the ride from falling any further. Two were dangling from the front car. There was a, an additional four passengers in the middle car and two more in the rear car. Those eight riders had to be rescued by firefighters while the front of the coaster hung off the track. Some were stuck for more than 30 minutes. Six people were taken to the hospital. The riders were very frightened and the firefighters were doing a great job of trying to uh, make sure that everyone stayed calm so the rescue could go off successfully. Crews used a fire ladder to guide this woman back to the ground. Whoa! The roller coaster is called the Sand Blaster. It's a three car sit down ride that operates on a winding steel track. Investigators are still working to figure out what caused the accident. In February of last year, the ride was temporarily shut down after inspectors found more than a dozen problems. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. The extent of those injuries are unknown, but local media did report at the time that all the patients, including the two that fell, were alert as they were being loaded into the ambulances there. Law enforcement and first responders are always exploring new ways to help serve the public and keep it safe, and the owner of a local drone company is looking to give some additional help with that. Jason Preston is the owner of 417 Drone and put on a drone demonstration last night. His company is actually offering services to emergency responders to help do their jobs using drone technology with the addition of thermal vision as the real benefit to the service. Being a former firefighter, Preston says being able to look inside a scene is where things really change. Essentially what we had in mind uh, with this is for searching for lost people or if uh, the police department have uh, the, where they've had someone bail out and they need help finding someone as well. Whether you're looking for a fugitive or if you're looking for someone that's injured, if they've reached that point that they passed out or they just can't move anymore, anything that's in that body temperature range, it'll draw your attention to it almost immediately. 417 Drone is offering this for free of both cost and liability to first responders. And in some good news this morning, a Springfield Park is ready for kids and families. And just in time for summer, Tom Watkins Park received a major renovation of more than half a million dollars recently. The restrooms are probably the most important addition, let's be honest. Something that the park did not have before. That cost just over $196,000. Another popular feature is a new interactive playground, as you see here. It has slides, a rotary swing, and climbing features. 
Parents, I didn't forget about you. There's also plenty of benches and shade. The park also has a new walking track for those looking to get out. Uh, other improvements include a lighting and electrical upgrades, an 18 hole disc golf course. Marty Murray, the president of the Tom Watkins Neighborhood Association, says that neighbors have fought for years to bring these improvements. It's amazing. It's, it's really been a long time coming. We, as a neighborhood, have really fought for years to get improvements for the kids to get more people out in the park and active. Now the entire park costs nearly $645,000 and that was funded through grants and the city's neighborhood work program and the HUD program which is also funding new playgrounds at other parks which include Cooper, Nichols and Metter. Councilwoman Phyllis Ferguson held a town hall meeting at Tom Watkins Park just before that ribbon cutting last night. The discussion included crime, safety, and nuisance properties. Residents asked about vacant or nuisance properties in their neighborhoods, and others raised concerns about drugs and other dangerous activity near their homes. City officials encouraged neighbors to keep reporting those issues and get in contact with the city for more serious cases. A Neosho man has pled not guilty for first degree murder after a road raid in incident. In your right to know this morning, 23 year old Christopher Montz has been charged in the shooting death of 27 year old David Reynolds of Carthage. It happened on Route 249 in Joplin last Sunday. Reynolds had pulled over Montz so he could pass him. That's when Montz followed Reynolds to the shoulder. They both left their cars, and that's where Montz allegedly shot Reynolds. And Springfield police are looking for a 55-year-old man who hasn't been heard from in almost a month. Raymond Glenn Highskill is his name, and he's 5 feet 11 inches tall and 220 pounds. He also has several tattoos. He was dropped off at Kansas Expressway and Norton Road on May 15th and hasn't been seen since. Police say he has medical issues that require medication. Anyone who might have seen him is urged to call police.